here in New Hampshire, we're allowed to do what we want. Fuck you, feds. If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. Hey guys, welcome to another rally where our rights have still not been restored. I kind of like his ideas about looking to the New Hampshire Constitution and saying, here in New Hampshire, we're allowed to do what we want. Fuck you, feds. Amen! So, um, briefly, my name is Carla Garrick. Um, I used to be the president of the Free State Project. I'm a free stater. Um, I am here to take over the state and leave you the hell alone. here is personally responsible for their own lives. Yes. That means you take care of you, I take care of me, and if we want to work together voluntarily, we'll take care of each other. But we can't be forced by the hand of the government to do good to others. We should do it because it's in our hearts and we know it's in our hearts because we're stoners. Yeah. Woo! I'm running for Senate in District 20, that's Manchester and Gosstown, Wards 3, 4, 10, and 11. I'm obviously pro-pot. As my sign over there says, I'm also pro-gun and anti-war. If you don't understand what that means, come talk to me and I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Thank you. Hi guys, thanks so much for coming out here in the name of liberty and personal responsibility. For those of you who do not know who I am, I am the former president of the Free State Project, which is a movement to bring 20,000 reinforcements to New Hampshire to continue to expand and preserve the liberties we already find here. Yeah. Last year, I ran for New Hampshire State Senate against a 10-term incumbent. I ran as a Republican on an open platform of legalizing marijuana, ending the drug war, and ending police militarization in our state. Woo! I lost. <laughs> but 8,600 people voted for me, and I did not once hide from what my platform was or what my background is. I finished high school when I was 16 years old. I finished law school when I was 21 years old. That's a humble brag to tell you I'm a very high-functioning stoner. I started smoking when I was 16 years old, and I've smoked regularly since then, and smoked about 10 minutes ago. Woo! Someone, Ian Freeman from Free Talk Live, I heard him speak on the radio about 10 years ago, and he said in the radio broadcast, where are the doctors and the lawyers and the other professionals who smoke pot? Why can't they come out, say they do it, say they can still keep a straight job and not have to hide? We need to normalize normal behavior. <laughs> confession to make. I'm originally from South Africa and uh, I started my law career there and um, the first person I ever defended was a guy who got a black guy who got busted for a matchbox filled with marijuana. Back in apartheid South Africa, much like they do here, they used marijuana laws to control people and ultimately to hurt them by putting them in cages. So, what they taught me in law school was, just plead out when you can. And that is a sentiment that has come to America, and too many people plead out. If 90% of people who pled out didn't, we would crash the legal system in this country. And a lot of that is because of the unjust drug wars that we suffer under. So this guy, I pled him out. And I felt really bad about it, and he was gonna get six months in jail. He was a man in his late 40s, he worked at a gas station, he obviously couldn't afford not to have a job. 
when uh, the sentence came through, they immediately, of course, arrest you. And he said to me, so uh, I have to go to jail right now? Right now for a matchbox full of marijuana? I haven't said goodbye to my family. They don't even know I was arrested. And I don't have my toothbrush. And that just really struck me and it's always stayed with me because that simple idea of you're gonna put me in jail for a plant, I didn't even know I don't have my toothbrush. So um, we need to change that. So I've had a pretty successful career. Uh, in part, I actually believe because I choose to self-medicate. I think the notion that a natural plant that feeds the receptors in our body can be made illegal by a bunch of squares. This just astounds me. And it takes, and it astounds me further how long it's taken to just see a little bit of success. And we are seeing incremental success, but I don't think we're going far enough. What we need with medical marijuana is one more qualifying condition, and that condition is free will. But we also have to remember it's not just an issue about weed. This is actually an issue about personal liberty, about your actual freedom. So the state lied to us about reefer madness. I mean, it was a bold, terrible, destructive lie. But they're also lying to us about other things. They lied to you about the food pyramid. They told you things like bacon and eggs was bad for you. It's not. What's bad for you is the plastic food that the whole industry is based on now. They lied to us about forensics. It's a way they catch people for crimes. If you've seen Making a Murderer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If they can't get a bad guy, they'll make one up. Do you know why? Because the police in this country is too large. There's too much of a standing army in this country with a force that sees you and me as the enemy. And that has to end. They lie to you about money creation. Do you wonder why you feel like you keep getting poorer and poorer? It's because you are. That's called inflation. It's a silent secret tax. So if you do one thing after we smoke up in a few minutes, go home and figure out how money works. And then you can base some really smart decisions about your own future on that knowledge. But the greatest lie I think they tell us is that we uh, need them at all. That they need to exist at all. We are so fortunate to be living in an era and a time, the first time in history, and in the future with the smartphones and the technology and the cryptocurrencies and the crypto systems like the blockchain to set ourselves free, to eliminate ourselves from the, the cancer that is their money, and to truly live as free people. I really hope one day we think about the state as in the same way we thought about burning witches. I'm almost done here. A few other things you guys should think about is we have to, for the activists and the state reps who are here, we have to, at a minimum, get a homegrown provision. Because if I can't treat my pot plant like I would my tomato, am I free? No. I also stand here today on the steps of the court, uh, State House here in Concord, New Hampshire, to ask our governor, Chris Sununu, to pardon all New Hampshire nonviolent drug offenders. Yes. And I ask him respectfully that he should end funding for Granite Hammer immediately. Woo! Together, we can all take a stand. It's about communicating our ideas. We need to keep the dialogue going, but honestly, we also need some good faith 
from their end to say, you know what? We want to have this dialogue and the issues you're bringing up are legitimate. And I think starting to ask that we can grow our own plants seems like a good place to start. Thank you. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters. <laughs>